ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome on board of Malaysia Airlines. My name is Alif Yoska, your co-pilot with me on the flight deck. Ghana is the name, Ghana, we wish to proclaim, we will be jolly, merry and gay, the 6th of March, Independence Day. Ghana was an ideal destination for exploration because of my deep interest in the African slave trade. This morning I'm going to Cape Coast, that's a six hour journey. So first of all, I'm going to um, Kanaishi, Kanaishi Market. So I hopped on an Uber ride that cost me 40 Ghana cities down to the bus station. Arriving at the bus station, I found the vehicle very quick. Vehicles with air condition cost 70 Ghana cities. It was actually comfy for me. I never felt like I was traveling in intercity because I could see houses around and not forest. So we got to the police checkpoint. The police officers were very playful and polite. Yeah, they sold a lot of stuff by the roadside. I almost bought octopus thinking it was meat pie. On my way, I spotted Fort Amsterdam. Alighting at my destination, I did bought a cab that cost 20 Ghana cities down to the Cape Coast Castle. Yeah, I was ripped because it wasn't supposed to cost more than 10 Ghana cities if tricycles were charging 4 Ghana cities for such distance. Look at this cannon grind. It's taking us about 45 minutes to probably an hour. But let's enter the shade. Let's be in the shade. Now this is historic Cape Coast Castle, which was built by the British people around 1665. British built this castle at the peak of the trans Atlantic slave trade. The way they built this castle, these dungeons alone, they kept about 1,300 human beings at one time in the dungeons. From the entrance, so all these spaces to the last end were designed for men. Thousand were here. That's against 300 women at the other side. That is where we're coming to see today. They stayed two weeks in these dungeons to about three months, all because of availability of British ships. But 1807, British passed a law said they stopped this trade. 1814, Dutch also passed the same law. But from then to 1860, Africa, this trade did not stop. That alone continued for over 40 years. So 1860, slave trade ended finally in this building. So after that, they used the structure as a colonial administrative center. Not only Ghana, British colonial from this building, but other English colonies in West Africa, like Nigeria and others, this building was used as their headquarters. And the British controlled the building up to the time Ghana will gain independence on the March 6th, 1957. They will move the British out of this building. So the structure, as of 2024, it is 359 years old. That is the age of this structure. But if you come to Ghana, we have three major castles and several of the fort along the coast. But the first one of all is at El Nina. That was built by Portuguese around 1482. We are well in Accra, built by the Danes around 1661. So basically, this is the youngest. But before the castle was built by the British, this land changed hands. Before they started the construction in 1665, this land changed hands from Portuguese people through Swedish people through Danish, through Dutch, and to the British. And that was all through war. They were fighting among themselves. So when the British got the land in 1664, and they built this castle, they knew other Europeans would attack them. So the British brought all those cannons to see around for defense. That was why they stayed here for over 200 years, and nobody conquered them. So when the British were here, Dutch attacked them again. Danes also came, French came, Germans came, including sea pirates. And those people couldn't conquer the British because of all the defensive weapons. All right.
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the dungeons. I told you all together, they built it for 1,000 men, but they divided the dungeons into five. So this is one of them. In this space, they kept 200 human beings here, 200. There was no electricity. That is why I off the light briefly, so that you can have a feel of the original situation. So these three hosts were their only source of light and air for 200 Africans. So some of them got blind, but they stayed two weeks minimum to three months. So some became blind. If you look at the floor, you can see bricks. They brought this one from England, this original building materials. They brought this from England. They brought them to balance their ships to Africa. Going these Africans as balance away. And they did not give the Africans toilet facility. You are welcome. And I'm going to say, just stand here. You're welcome. Just stay here. Thank you. Great. They didn't give the Africans toilet facility or urina or chair to sit on. So black people were compared to go to toilet over here. They will urinate. They were here three solid months. These trenches we see now, they built them as their urina. Now when they urinate, the urine will pass through into the sea. But it reached a time that some Africans started fighting British people. They wanted freedom from the dungeons. Those who were doing that, they identified them and brought them from this side to this place. So then they created a door here. So this place was called a strong room. So British were not coming to clean the solid waste. So the waste started piling. Started from one level to the other to the other. It reached a time that this bricks was completely covered with human waste. The waste came up thick like this. So I'm going to show you that one. But look on this wall, look down. You can see some dirty lines, white markings on the wall. There are some alphabet up, A, B, C, D, that kind of thing. I can see some markings down. Because they stopped cleaning this place, the waste came up all the way to the bottom of the lines. It reached the heights like this. It reached this height. You can see the markings, it reached the bottom. This bricks was not showing. But 1974, 50 years ago, University of Ghana Archaeological Department came to do excavation here. Before they found these bricks, that was when they marked the wall like that, 74. So many died, those who died were thrown into the sea. They were not buried. They gave them food once in a day, sometimes twice, something small just to keep them alive. So they clear all the waste in 74, but they left a portion. That one is the one we are fenced here. So my brother with the bottle of water, please come here. This group, let's come closer so that we can see. Look inside the fence. There is something there like a square. Can you see that one? which is not the same like the bricks. Yeah. There's something here. This is solidified African waste. This is how the floor was like. So this was tested, and it proved that it had toilet, urine, sweat, tears, saliva, and other things. So this is solidified ancestral waste. But because it's been a long time, now this has changed like an ordinary soil. So we are done with the first chamber. We are moving to second. So if you see holes like this in the olden days, it means in the olden days, these ones were windows or light. But the bigger one here, this one serve as a spy hole. But where we are all standing now, on top of us, British went to build a church. Did you hear me? They built a church, oh. And the church was Anglican church. So they go to church upstairs. They preach Bible. They will shout hallelujah. But they kept you and I, our people here, suffering in the smelling dungeons. They didn't see anything wrong with that. British people, headed by the queen at the time. And all this money 
and all the profit went to the Queen in England. But all of you, look at this floor. Can you see bricks here, please? So what is this one? Okay, what I'll show you in the first chamber, if you compare to this one, what do you think this one is? This is all waste, an accumulation of toilets, urine, and other things. Because the original floor is made of bent bricks like this one. This is all solid waste. Because the scavenge was done only in the first chamber. The floor has not been touched. That's why you can't see bricks here. And this one also had about 200 black people. So out of the 1,000, by the time they were ready to go with them, a lot of them died here, but also survived. That was not the end of their journey. British should bring them from the dungeon. They will always chain them. They will march them to this place. When they reached here, then there was a hole at the back of this white cloth, round hole. They called that a tunnel. So they marched them through the tunnel, all the way to the door of no return, the darkness. When you, were, when, you came, when you were taking the pictures with the cannons arranged, you were on a hole you did not know. There's a hole from here, all the way to the ships. But the hole was blocked by one British governor called Captain George McLean. He did that to signify the end of this trade in this building. But when we go outside, I will show you part of the hole, but it is close. And when they bring Africa from the darkness to where we are gathered now, because they kept them here for over a month, some of them were actually sick and weak because of the bad treatment given to them. So when they reach the sick ones, British will select them. They will send them to that small room to go and wait temporarily, just to allow those who are strong to go. That was why British created this window. Because those days there was no light. So they created this for them to see who is sick and who is not sick. So this place was called selection room or sorting room. So whenever the stronger ones live, the sick ones were brought from there. They kept them back here, but eventually, all of them died because they were not given any medical attention. What we see here is a shrine, which was not here. But we must know that before Europeans came to Africa with Christianity and Islamic religion that was brought by the Arabs, Africa in general, we knew God already before they came. We pray to God through smaller gods, we pour libation. So before British built the structure in 1665, the indigents who were here had a shrine like this. When the British came, they occupied this space, and they built a dungeon, they stopped the Africans from coming closer to pray. The local people came for their shrine to their community. So when the British left, they brought a shrine back here. This was brought here around 1960. The name is Nana Tabil. Cape Coast has about 77 of these girls. Nana is one of them. If you look around, you can see flowers around. It doesn't mean that somebody died here. The blacks taken away, they didn't get the opportunity to come back alive. But the descendants are coming home globally. They come here on daily basis. Whenever they come, we go around on a tour with them like this. Frankly speaking, many, many of them share tears with us. So that some of them pray, they pour libation, they do other rituals. And they, they leave these flowers here and they go. But that's why all of these things are here. So this morning, nobody will go to the sick bay, walking through the tunnel to the door of no return. We are all free, so we are going back. Did you see a change in your sight when we came out from the darkness? How long did this stay? Is it like a week? It's not even up to 20 minutes. Even with that, there's a change. So just imagine those who stayed there three months, what happened to their sight. That was why some of them got blind. And the one with the blue windows here, that is the Anglican church. The church above the dungeon. And this is where we came from. Look, that is where the shrine is. That's where we came from. And we have graves in the yard. This is for, uh, we have one and three. This is for one person by name, Philip Kweku. Kweku is a Ghanaian name. And the Kweku was corrupted into Kwaku because British couldn't pronounce our names properly. Now this man, his father, worked with the British. So because of that, they took the son to England. There were three boys, Philip, Thomas, and William. When they got to England, the two died. He survived. British trained him as a pastor and a teacher. He 
he came back to this country, then Gold Coast, as a pastor and a teacher preaching in the Anglican Church. At that same time, his colleagues were down, suffering for months. This man taught some mulatto children. He worked for the British for the rest of his life and died October 17, 1816, 75 years of age. So because he worked for British, that was why they honor him with the barrier. So this is Philip Kweku, who later became Reverend Philip Kwaku. This time, Kweku, there are schools named after him. But when this man came, colonial time, he promoted Western education. Let's go this way. These three are for British people. So you can see clearly that even in dead, there was separation. Black person there, British here. And this is for one British soldier called C.B. Whitehead. I don't know how white the head was. But the man was called Whitehead. He was a soldier. He died 1812, 838 till now. We don't know what killed Whitehead. This was somebody called Captain George McLean. Names like McLean, McDonald's, McCarthy. These are Scottish names. McLean came to this building 1830 as a governor. It was McLean who came to close the tunnel. Before McLean came, Africans were going through the tunnel. He closed that. He started a court up there called McLean's Hall because slave trade lasted on the continent of Africa 400 years. After that, they colonized Ghana, British colonized Ghana for 113 years. In colonial time, the capital of Ghana was in Cape Coast. They moved to Accra somewhere 1877. That was a court. McLean stayed in a building 17 years. Mosquitoes killed us. You know mosquitoes? He died 1847, 846 from malaria. That is the wife of McLean, called Leticia Elizabeth Lendon. She was the only white woman who came around during the entire period of the trade. But within two months, she was found dead. There were a lot of rumors at the time. Somebody said she was killed by mosquitoes within two months on arrival. The other one said because McLean stayed longer, and McLean wasn't going to England again. McLean has gone in for an African woman called Miss Barnaman from Accra. So when Leticia came to head of that story, out of jealousy, she took some poison and killed herself. But the last one said the woman that McLean was going out with, they said that woman was a beautiful woman. And she wanted to have McLean forever as a husband. So when Leticia came, a Ghanaian woman posed as a servant, then poisoned Leticia so that she would get McLean to marry. So these are the theories surrounding the death of Leticia. So till now, 2024, March ending, me, I don't know what killed her. But she actually died. She died in 1837, 10 years before the husband died, age 36. So what do you think killed Leticia? Broken heart. Broken heart, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> we have a reservoir here. This was built by Europeans. Get closer, have a look. They store rainwater here. When full, the volume is some 20,000 gallons. They only do rain harvesting. So we have some pipes around the building. Whenever it rain, all the water be harvested and stored. And so this is rain harvesting, rain harvesting. <laughs> if you look straight, you can see where the shrine is. That is why I said they do the selection. So when I said we're ready to go with the blacks, after selecting them, the stronger ones, they would not allow them to come outside. So they started from there. There's a hole down to the ships. They were on top of a big tunnel. These are cannons, all from Europeans to attack other Europeans. These ones are their bullets. These ones are cannonballs. These ones are cannons. This is the passage. So this tunnel started from where the shrine is. We were on top taking pictures all the way to the exit. So this was where they monitor their movement as they go to the final exit. So this is part of the tunnel. So let's see the end of the tunnel.
We are coming to see the end of the tunnel. And this is the end of the tunnel. Look at it. This is the end. And the tunnel is about 80 meters long. About 78 meters to 80 meters. So from where the shrine is, they walk, chain together. When they got here at first, this was an exit initially. This was an exit into the ships. But due to the tidal waves, the sea was coming in. So British then closed that side. And this became the new entrance. So from here, instead of them going this way into the ships, they come out this way. So let's go back. Within these dungeons, there are two separate cells within this dungeon. We have one here, one closer to the uh, storerooms there. And this cell in particular was designed for some of the female captives that British wanted to rape, but the women refused. Because of malaria, Europeans didn't come to Africa with their wives. Malaria killed them to the extent that they named their coast of West Africa the white man's grave. So only men like us came. They left their wives back in Europe to take care of their children. But British men who were here couldn't stay alone for a longer time without women, so they raped the African women. But sometimes, if they wanted to do that, women would be fighting with them. Those who said no to rape, they brought them here. They had a door. They would lock them. They would stay for about a week for punishment. And they were doing that for other women to see. So that tomorrow when they approach you, what will you do? You don't fight. You can see a hole there, get closer. There's a hole there. That hole was their toilet given to them. They pass food and water through this place. Once in a day, sometimes twice. That was their toilet. This was for food and water. This and this were built for women. We started from the male dungeons and we want to balance gender. I don't want to bias towards the ladies here. So let's enter one of the female dungeons. So let's walk. One step down. The women were 300, so 150 here. The same in the other one. And women shouldn't have been taken as slaves because we know this transatlantic slave trafficking started in the 1500th when in the history of the whole world. There was this man called Christopher Columbus. He said he discovered the Americas, which we know is not true. So when he said so, the Spanish people moved from Europe to those places and they established their plantations where they needed labor to work. So they tried to use the people who owned the land called the Native Americans or the Red Indians to work for them. But according to the same Europeans, they said those people were not strong and they were dying from diseases. So there was a Roman Catholic bishop. His name was Bartolomeo de las Casas. He suggested to the Spanish people to look for alternative sources of labor to replace the Native Americans. For that matter, look for black people who are stronger and can work under similar climatic conditions to replace the Native Americans. So from then, the demand for Africans started coming in. So Africans were taken to go and work for Europeans on their farms in America and Caribbean. So if we talk of weeding and harvesting sugarcane, cotton, tobacco, rice, and working in the construction sectors and in the mines, men like us would have been a preferred choice. But they added women also. And the question is, do you know why? This is a practical question. Who can tell me? Who? Like Van Dijk, Van der Poy, Van Vika. Battels, Da Costa, De Souza, Johnson, Cumson, Blanson, Anderson, Thompson, Williams, Ferguson, Cumson, McLean, McCarthy, Banama, Dawson, all the sins and sins. Do you know some of these names? <laughs> Texan, Peterson, Bruce, Hagen, all of these. These names came out of raping black women. So if you are Ghanaian, you have any of these names, don't be proud about these names at all. They came out of raping human beings. 
So if you are Ghanaian, know some of these names in society. Please, if you see them, educate them for me, okay? Educate them. Let's go. <laughs> We are before the door of no return. The door was here, but it was not like this. The original was small and narrow, which was designed for one individual at a time. It was built small in a way to control the blacks. So they go through one after the other, chained together, taken away. But they made the door bigger like this during British colonial time. This came colonial time. If you happen to visit Elmina Castle, Elmina has the original door. This was changed. And if you go through this door of no return, during the time of slave trade as a black person, one, you will lose your identity. You will lose your culture, respect, dignity, and everything. From this castle, some of the captives were taken to North America, United States, places like Jamestown in Virginia, North and South Carolina, and all the original British colonies in America. You know, they call them the 13 colonies. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Okay. You try, you try. But the original 13 colonies, all of the slaves who went, they passed through here. Some of the states were for Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, and others. Even Russia, other states. Alaska was for Russia, you know that? You didn't know that? Oh man, you are coming from America. New York was for which people? New York was a Dutch colony. Florida was Spanish and others. Oh, you should know this one. You didn't know that? Oh, I'm telling you your history. Good. But let's end it here. So all the, the original 13, we passed through this castle. Some went to England as well. Precisely Liverpool. And Liverpool was the biggest slave harbor in the whole of Europe, Liverpool. Some were taken to Bristol, Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, including Barbados, all from this castle. But those who were taken to Brazil, Brazilians, were taken from Elmina Castle because Brazil was a Portuguese colony. Some Brazilians were taken from Angola and Congo, but places like Suriname, Dutch Guyana, Curaçao, they were taken from Elmina by the Dutch. Those who went to the French Caribbean, they were taken from Senegal, Gori Island. But those who were taken to Haiti, they were taken from Benin and some part of Nigeria. And do you know that Brazil received the largest number of slaves from Africa? Do you know that? Brazil got 47% of the entire slaves from Africa. And Brazil is the third largest black population in the whole world outside Nigeria and Ethiopia. As of today, 2024, Brazil have a black population of about 93 million. Did you hear me? There are 93 million blacks in Brazil only. So all those guys see playing soccer in Europe, you clap for them that they are Brazilians. They are not Brazilians, so. <laughs> they are our own people. Because Brazil is not an extension of Africa. Did you hear me? Brazil is not, it's not an extension of Africa. They are there because of this sad history or story. We are going to go to the door of no return. However, you are sure we will return. So let's come. I mean in So after going through the door of no return, at that time the sea came here. This construction was done just about some four years ago. It was to create some mini harbor for the fishermen because this is a fishing village. So the sea came here, right here. The sea was here at the time. So the Africans were put on canoes or boats from here. From here they go to the bigger ships. They never return. Now, because the weather is hot, let me talk about this. The door of return at the back of no return. This came 1998, this one. We had a ceremony in Ghana called Emancipation 98. During that time, skeletons of two black people, they called them Samakasin from New York, 
and Madame Krista from Jamaica. The remains of the two were Zim brought to Accra, Accra to where we are gathered this hot afternoon. They put them in two caskets, the door was open. They were taken through to where I show you the grapes for short African funeral ceremony. From there, the remains of the two black people were taken to a nearby town called Asin Manso, where we have a slave river for Ribaria. So because two remains came, and are with us on our soil buried in 1998. That is why we have renamed the door, the door of return. So ladies and gentlemen, let's all return. So I mentioned to you that within the dungeon, they created cells. And I talk about the female punishment cell. This was another cell. But this one, we are all entering. So you watch your head as we enter. But please, if you go, don't stand at the entrance. Go inside. So let's go. See where we are gathered now. Yes. This is not a comfortable place. That we must know from today that British built this place for some of our people that they kept in the dungeons as captives. And because of the bad treatment given to them, some of them were fighting British. Their message was freedom. Some said they were freedom fighters. Others said they were rebellious slaves. Those who were doing that, men, they brought them here from the dungeons. This cell has three doors. Take note, there was a door here. I remove this one. Another door in the middle and the last door. They will bring those people here. They will lock the three doors. They won't give them food. No water, no air, no light. Then they kill them. They died through starvation. So this was a condemned cell. The last door left is open. But look at it, we are, we are sweating here. This is how British, who said they were Christians, for that matter, Anglicans. That's how they killed black people without any justification. And let me ask you this. This was done to African race for 400 years. A lot of them died, painful death. And the people who died like this, don't they have right? Don't they have right? Yeah. But look, today, we have forgotten about this. These same people have turned around talking about human rights against with Africans today. Let's come out this way. Let's go this way. There are some people in society, they are all over the world. They will come to you in your home they will, with a gun. They will tell you, give them all your money, all your belonging. If you don't do it, they will kill you sometimes and run away with all your things. How do you call them? Armed robbers. Yeah. Armed robbers? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sorry. Armed robbers? We overthought that. Are they in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Are they in Europe? Well, I thought they were all in Africa. They are everywhere. <laughs> There were some people like that in the wilderness. When Europeans came, they partnered those people. So they supplied those people guns. They gave them sardine, sugar, mirrors, tobacco. And their system of trading was butter. So they forced the robbers to accept their, go to accept their goose because there wasn't money to pay for. These robbers who organized themselves like we are gathered now in a group, they would go to villages, raid, capture innocent people at Ga in Ghana. I can tell you on authority 
that not long ago, if you own somebody in this country, and you hasn't got that amount of money to pay, you can allow your son, your daughter, sometimes your wife, to go and work for the person you owe for a number of years just to pay the debt. Thailand. Thailand. Yes. Great. Or Asia. She asked a very intelligent question. I want her to repeat the question so that I will answer. Um, what is the purpose of putting the slaves in the dungeons for three months after they were auctioned instead of just selling or like sending them um, to like the different countries where they're bought from right away after auction? No ships were available. No ships available. Uh -huh. Some of them immediately they were auctioned. They, if there was available ship, they would go. If they auction you today, and in two days time there was a ship, they, you go. The Fort Williams was built by the English. It was for their military. So military were there, British military. And they were looking for around whether other Europeans were coming to fight them. So that was built to protect this building. And they were supported by all of these cannons. We have some structures here. So the one, so you can see some people working upstairs. The structure before them is a church, the one with the cross. That is the Anglican church. The church above the new dungeon was built a slave trade time, but this was built colonial time, so this Anglican church. But the one in the center was kitchen, where they prepare food for everybody at that time. This was a kitchen. Let's move on. This is a hall called McLean's Hall. McLean's Hall was actually the court. Do you know court? Law court. So this was colonial court. After slavery, 400 years. We were colonized by England for 113 years. And then the capital was in Cape Coast. It was moved to Accra, 1877. So this was British colonial court. At that time, the year that was the, which we are changing to shops now, it was changed to a prison. That was the first prison, colonial time. And the church was also used as a classroom and in a broadcasting house. So this was first colonial court. That was the first prison. And the church was first classroom and in a radio, radio station, broadcasting house. We are going to the last place, which was the, which the governor's bedroom. I go to the governor's bedroom. Brothers and sisters, we have climbers at tour. So we are almost getting to the end of the lesson. But this is a governor's living room, governor's residence, but this is a living room. Look at the space, the breeze. Count the number of windows compared to the dungeon, compared to the cell, and tell me the difference. You can see nine windows in the living room, nine windows. Let's move to his bedroom. So that was a living room. We counted nine windows. This is a bedroom. How many windows can you see here? Five. So add five to nine. Fourteen. With additional two here. We went to the dungeon. How many windows do you see in the dungeons? Two and three. Were there windows at all? Windows. Holes. And they live like this on our soil. Hmm. This for one person. One person. Only. Now the wooden floor we are working on, it is not original. The floor was wood.
Gulf of Guinea. If you look down, you can see a natural rock. That is a foundation of the castle. They build their castle on the rock like this. My decision for breakfast this morning sucks, man. They say if you can survive in Lagos, if you can survive in Accra, Ghana, you can survive anywhere in the world. 